Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Busisiwe Lamele Harodi, the KMPEF principal. If you haven't subscribed already onto my channel, may you please click the subscribe button there at the bottom as well as the notification bell so that every time when I upload a video, you get notified so that you can be the first one to, um, to look at it. So in this video, I want us to talk about tabidometry and nephilometry. So we will start with um, tabidometry. So so basically um, what happens is that if you can remember from the video that we did when we were talking about spectrophotometry, so tabidometry as well uses the normal spectrophotometer. So what happens is that there's a beam of light that will be shown through a cuvette that contains a um, particle that will be suspended into the solution. And then those particles, what they will do, they, um, as you know, some they will either absorb to the light or they will transmit the light. So some light will be absorbed and some light will be transmitted. And then it means um, the transmitted light then will go into the detector. And then the detector will detect the amount of light that will be transmitted there. So basically what uh, tubidometry is, we say it's when you measure the light transmitted by particles in a suspension at 180 degrees angle as you can see this is a straight i'll use a right angle like that so this is a straight line which is in 180 degrees ang angle so basically that's how you can um define spectra um, not spectrophotometry sorry tabidometry in simple terms so we can write it down and say So that's how you put it down in writing. That tabidometry is the measurement of light transmitted by particles suspended in a solution at the 180 degrees angle. So like I said, in a straight line. So tabidometry, like I said before, that um, to, to measure or to use this principle, we can use a normal spectrophotometer. And from Beer's law, you know that already that um, the light that is transmitted it's inversely proportional to concentration. Which will be inversely proportional to the concentration of that analyte that is pre uh, present in the patient sample. So tuberology, uh, most of the time in clinical chemistry, it is used to measure um, proteins that we cannot uh, measure with um, other um, principles like CRP uses tabidometry, um, rheumatoid factor, and immunoglobulins as well. So we'll measure them using tabidometry. So what happens that with tabidometry, another thing about it is that it is affected by size and the concentration of the particles in the solution. So if you have bigger particles, in the solution, it means more light will be absorbed, of which it won't necessarily indicate the concentration of that analyte that is present in the patient sample. So basically, that's what we mean that we say it is affected by size and concentration. So that is tabidometry. And then when we talk about nephilometry, With nephilometry, what will happen, we will still have 
a beam of light from the light source that will be shown through the suspension and then what happens with the filament is that the particles that are present there in the suspension what they will do they will scatter the light so that um that's why you will find it now the detector if you can remember with turbidometry it was measuring in a straight line at 180 degrees so the detector was, was on this side but with nephilometry now that light that will be scattered will be measured at different angles which can be between 70 degrees to a 90 degrees angle so now it means your detector will be let's say somewhere here or on top depending on how those components um are built up so that's nephilometry we'll measure the line that is scattered which will be usually between 70 to a 90 degrees angle. Okay. So um, the amount of light that is scattered, minute concentration. So that's why it is sensitive. But usually what I like, I like to study these two together by comparing them in a table, which makes it easier for me when I study and quicker as well. For me to to understand so now we can compare between the two so we can have tibidometry on this side nephilometry so Firstly, to, uh, to differentiate between the two, we will start with the definition. So we said, tibidometry, what does it do? It measures light transmitted by particles suspended in a solution at the 180 degrees angle. Whereas nephilometry, what it will do to measure scattered light at different angles. So now we have compared uh, these two based on the definition angle. So another thing that we can talk about is the type of instrumentation that these principles uses. So with tibidometry, you can use the normal spectrophotometer Whereas with nephilometry, you need specialized instrumentation. Then another thing is that um, with tibidometry, it is less sensitive. So in um, medical technology, when you speak about sensitivity, we speak about the ability of the principle of the method to determine the minute concentration of analyte. So it means the sensitivity of um, tibidometry is less than 
where, than the uh, nephelometry one. So nephelometry is more sensitive. So even if you can test dilute um, suspensions or solution, you will be able to determine the, the concentration. Then tabulometry, it is affected. by size and concentration, where else nephilometry, it is not affected by the size of the particles. So basically, if you can study them in this table, so you've actually summarized each and every aspect that is there, with the principle of tibetometry and nephilometry in just one little table which is going to save you more time uh, when you study then we can also add here at the bottom the tests that can be done so with tibetometry can be used to determine crp your rheumatoid factor and your immunoglobulins and then with um nephilometry we can determine isotypes of immunoglobulins as well on that side so basically those are the tests you, you can add more if you can to this test that can be can use this um principles so basically that's what it is that i wanted us to talk about between nephilometry and tibetometry if there's anything that you do not understand or if there's something that i missed you can interact there in the comment field which i'll be happy to hear from you and for more uh, in-depth um, help with preparation for your board exam, I am more than uh, welcome to, to help you. You can just um, send me an email, the email address that I'll put down there at the bottom. From me, up until next time, 